Hey everyone and welcome to this new video. In this video I want to introduce you to this doorbell camera and show you not only the features but also how you can build the whole thing yourself. More after the intro. Enjoy! Yes, before we get to the parts and assembly I'll briefly show you the features of this camera. This is both a doorbell and a camera which are linked together. In 2021, when I press the button on the doorbell, the LED ring light automatically turns on, the camera takes a photo, and I receive a push notification on my phone with the information that someone is at the door, along with the photo that was just taken by the camera. Additionally, I have the option to open the front door directly from the menu, or alternatively, by clicking on the image, access my Home Assistant dashboard, where I can receive a live feed from the camera, and also have the ability to adjust the LED ring light as well as open the front door. The camera is powered by 5V, but it could also alternatively be powered by a battery pack and, for example, solar energy. On the back of the camera, there is a hole in the cover through which the cable can be passed and the camera can be mounted on the wall. Somehow the design reminds me of conventional camera doorbell systems. This raises the question, why would I even want to build something like this myself? And in my opinion, there are actually three main arguments. One of them is, of course, the price. Since it consists of relatively few individual components, it is naturally quite easy to replicate and also relatively inexpensive to purchase. The second reason is that a code determined by you runs on the microcontroller here. That means at the end of the day, each of you can decide what this camera does and what it does not do. The images are stored by default in Home Assistant itself, meaning on your own server. The push notifications are sent only through your own phone and otherwise the camera performs all functions such as the light is triggered by pressing a button directly on the camera itself. There is no image recognition that happens server-side and there is no uploading of data to any clouds. Everything is completely available locally, without the internet at any time and can be configured by you as much as you want. And point number three is of course the design. So if someone currently doesn't have a greenhouse wall and would rather have a blue one, they can simply assemble a blue camera. The button can be replaced and substituted with any other just like the LED ring light or theoretically even the camera. This means that you can customize the camera as much as you like, giving you significantly more options than with a purchase solution. All right? Enough talking around it. Let's take a look at the individual components that are installed here. To do this, I will simply open the back and we can already see that there is just an ESP or rather an ESP with a camera in the housing. Additionally, there is the LED ring light and the button. These are simply soldered together and integrated into this deprinted housing here. Before we get to the assembly, let's first talk about the software. A small disclaimer. I didn't come up with this all by myself. Rather, I took an existing project and adapted it a bit to my needs. I will, of course, link the code for this and all the parts below in the video description. To get the software onto the ESP, you will need a so-called USB TTL module. Basically, this is just a USB interface for the microcontroller it needs to be connected to the microcontroller, as you can see in this picture. It is important that you create the bridge between I.O. and ground, as otherwise the microcontroller cannot be programmed. Once you have completed that, you just need to connect the USB module to the computer and flash the microcontroller once using ESP Home. As mentioned, you can find the code for this in the video description. Once you have programmed it, you can start assembling the parts. I will show you a picture of how everything is soldered together. And when you have finished that and installed it in the housing, you can also perform a small functionality test. To do this, simply press the button on the front and if everything is correct, the LED ring light should briefly illuminate. This will allow you to verify that the button press worked and that the ring light is properly connected. Theoretically, you could also adjust the colors or brightness for the LED ring light in the code and then there isn't much left to do except integrate everything into Home Assistant. Since I have configured a lot for myself, I will show you that in the next video. If you don't want to miss it, feel free to click subscribe and I would say we will take a look at how to set up the push notifications and how you can configure everything for yourself, all of that in the next video which will be next week. Until then, take care and goodbye.